Good morning, we've got cattle off to the abattoir this morning. We're four to go to AVP, so we're not using them ourselves. We're kind of, we're a bit long on numbers, so they'll end up in Asda. Harbro mixer wagons in today, mixing up hen feed. I am just probing some wheat, checking some temperatures. Check we're all good. It's looking good. It's just starting to tail off now, the out temperature, which is down at the bottom end of that probe. This is the temperature in the shed right now, so about 15 degrees. That's going to tail off at about 19.3, 19.5, there, thereabouts. So once you start creeping up into the low to mid 20s, that's when you've just got to keep an eye on things. I'll probe a few more spots just to be certain, just to be on the safe side of things. That's the probe in there, that wee silver bit. So I just made this last year, whatever it is, just a bit of steel, put a wee cone on the end and it's just getting held in place by a wee cable tie. Does the job. This could have been done a wee bit better if I hadn't, so I cut that slot in to pull this probe all the way down. I could have, if I left a cone off, pulled it all the way through to about here and then JB welded the probe in place somewhere in here, then welded a cone on, but I didn't want to damage that wire when I was welding down here with all the heat. Anyway, it does the job. It fires up initially, it'll do a big jump now. When you're pushing it down, there's quite a lot of pressure as you go deeper. So there's a lot of friction between this and the probe, so it generates a bit of heat. So there you go, it's jumped half a degree already. It'll, t it'll peak off, then I'll come back to level. Once the temperature of this wheat goes beyond kind of 22, 23, 24 degrees, the microbes within it become more active, and that produces heat because they're moving about, and then it goes off. So I'm just checking some temperatures, making sure we're all good. We're about to find out the effects of walloping a wonky stone grape with a bit of JCB force. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? So I told you in previous videos, basically because I welded all those seams, I've bowed the bottom beam. It's warped into a U shape. Not that obvious, but definitely a wee bit. Enough that's going to really annoy me. So what I'm going to do, leave one block of those in the middle, fork either side, press down, square it up, bang, jobs are good. Those blocks have dropped out, which is good. That means the, the gaps have opened up on those uprights, which means this is splayed out a wee bit and the top gap has opened a touch. Let's put a bit more gravity on that. There you go, the blocks are moving. It's doing roughly what I wanted. Right, let's go and see what that's like. It's quite a bit of gravity on that. I'll take the isolator out of the forklift, weld it up, happy days. Also the door on here, outrageously close. If I put a bit of weight on the door, it hits. Ba ba bing, ba ba boom. We've got steel plate along the front here to keep that. I used a bit of channel because it'll be a bit stronger, but to keep these uprights from moving when I take this off, which it basically is off because there's only one, two, three spurs that are actually tacked in. The rest, all attacks have failed. Start then filling it all with steel, then fill all the gaps with concrete, let it harden. Weld that box on the top again, cap the ends, cap the ends, flip it on its side, pour concrete down there, pour concrete down there. Got a bit of old plow metal, not much, but better than nothing. Loads of stuff that just, just doesn't fit. Cut the wee edges off that, that'll go. Got a few of those. Plow metal isn't actually very good because it takes up a lot of space and then... Oh, that one made it in, but you can only go too wide and then you can't get bits of pipe in. Or... Hedge cutter flail. Oh, that's a PTO and a Defender when it went. This was off the baler. When the bearing went, it collapsed and wore away all of that edge. So I had to get a new one of these. Very expensive as well. What would you call that? A spacer plate thing mix thingy. I don't know. It's going in there though. Lime's heading out again. There's one more load to arrive. That is a beast of a machine. The lime boy, I looked down the field thinking he's stuck, he's looking all caddy wampus. But I phoned him there and he's had a blowout. Gonna go and have a peek. What's gonna happen though is I'm gonna get stuck instead. <laughs> he looks all off kilter there, he's taking his forklift down, so he's had a big blowout on those tires. Won't be cheap tires on that big thing, massive big flotations. So the lime spreader didn't make it too far. I actually thought he was stuck because obviously he's sitting off and I was looking for him right up the top of the farm, but he's had a blowout down here. What is 1,050 wide tires, massive things. 
We've got a spare coming, we're going to change it. We've got a frame that links on the front there. Lift the, lift the machine up, frame goes under, get that changed. Typically, it was only moving for 20 minutes and then bang. I've just noticed he's nipped in for a coffee. Good man. Some machine that is a beast. Anyway, let's see if I can get out this field without getting stuck. They've got a spare coming. And then a couple of days ago, they had a valve that gave them bother. It was a valve that controls the bed on the hopper of the machine. The valve was going to the closing point, which was fine, but then it was going a few degrees beyond the closing point and it would open again. And it was enough just to cause them bother. So we had to source that part again. The boy was saying there once it's kind of done here and a couple more jobs, it's away back to the yard for a bit of TLC and a bit of a look over. And they're building a new one. I've got a few bits of metal kicking about that's even chopped up, so. Plasma cutters in action, I've not had this going for a while. Chop this old auger up. Plugging away with the steel. Started to fill up some of these uprights with various bits and bobs kicking about. I'm chopping out tabs for the end of the box section on the stone grate, just using the plasma cutter. They need cleaned off a wee bit, but it should be the same size as that. Or good enough anyway. So they go on there. Not on the top, on the ends. There's one end down there, one end down that end, and then the beam that goes across the top, there's an end on each side, but it's the same size. Just checking it for size. There we go, that's pretty good. I'll round off the edges with a grinder, clean off any slag that I went a bit wonky there with a the plasma cutter. Needing some B&Q from cement. Two bags of cement, probably actually only need one, but we can now get that mixed up and then I can basically fill all those tubes with cement. I'm still need to do a wee bit more metal work. That one's just about full. This one's needing a lot of metal. This one's needing a bit down the sides. This one's needing a bit down the sides. This one's getting there almost full. This one's full. And then the two ends are empty. More point and shoot. Oh yeah. I wish I'd gone for a better one. That was kind of the cheapest that would do what I needed it to do. It's just a Chinese one that everyone brands differently, but it's the exact same machine. It's, it's okay. I wish I'd got a good one. Anyway, this is a fun job. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Artwork, some would call that. Think this will ever see the light of day again? Goodbye. Oh. Adios. There's another pile of chopped up chunks, so they shoot all now. Not too hot. So this partition, when this comes down, well, I'm going to do we snap the fingers. There we go. It is well still in progress. Things are getting there. Bit of an oversight. Plug on the ceiling, wire that's coming down, we'll need to do something about that. This has all changed quite a bit now. There used to be chiller cabinets and a chiller cabinet on the wall there. That's all changed, so there's a bit more space actually around here. It will slowly, as we get more units and figure it all out, it will still, it will slowly come together a wee bit again. Anyway, that's that. You can see this is the beam, um, steel beam that I had to put in across here. This was a load-bearing wall along here, so when that got taken down needed to be a steel beam to take the load out. V 
these chill units might be better kind of working off of the wall to hide the wiring so there's not a wire hanging down. Anyway, that's the new bit that's in the process of getting finished. Ooh, look at that. Now we're talking. Stop by if you're passing. What a start to Scotland at the Six Nations. You think we've got a chance at winning it? I hope so. Anyway, anyway, I've got three cattle to get to the abattoir just now. Sunday after Saturday of the rugby, so head's a bit sore.